All right guys, so I like to prioritize the really cool modifications. So let's get in here, let's take apart the Nemesis and let's get it fully functional, completely overhauled and just doing the best it absolutely can. But before you start taking any screws out, you definitely need to remove your entire hopper assembly. I would also recommend checking really quick just to make sure that you don't have any preloaded into here. Then I would also recommend before taking this apart at all, removing any batteries you have in either the tray or the rechargeable battery pack. I'd also leave this door off because it's going to prevent us from successfully butterflying this open. Then it looks like we have a lot of screws to get to. So opening up the Nemesis is actually quite simple. They're all Phillips head screws roughly size 0 or 1 and they all come out with great ease. The incredibly long ones are all surrounding the agitator so that's all you really have to remember. Then two pieces come off and the Nemesis butterfly is open. You can see here that the internals are exactly what we expect, very similar to the Chaos. One singular motor powers both the conveyor and the agitator. The only lock is an electronic lock uh, that I'm pointing at right now that prevents you from revving or firing while the hopper is removed. That's no big deal. We'll be removing that along with the entirety of the circuit right now. The fact of the matter is that we want this to be powered off of LiPo for incredible performance, ease of rechargeability, and just an overall cleaner circuit. So in order to do that, we have to desolder all of the leads from the entire assembly and we'll be replacing that with high amperage switches. That means that this crappy uh, stock wiring has to go as well. To remove the entire front assembly, there are only two silver Phillips head screws, and once they come out, the whole thing removes. Now, you can see that it's exactly what we thought. It's two flywheels powered by two rival motors in standard configuration. Then there's two screws holding on the motor, I guess, PCB boards and then as you come in you can just desolder those very easily from the leads to the motor on both the pusher motor and the flywheel motors. Then the stock switches come out and we can trash all of it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm currently showing you the switches that I use. They're 25 amp micro switches that I'll link in the description box if you need to purchase some of your very own. They can handle the current from virtually any LiPo that I could put into this thing and they have a really great clicky response. I like them a lot. I use them in virtually all of my flywheel builds. What I'm doing right now is I'm stitching up some 16 gauge silicone insulated wire that's threaded. All of those things are important. This wire is ideal for our purposes. It's hobby grade wire and it will handle the current from the LiPo as well. It's also really easy to work with, very bendy and super duper easy to solder because you can split the, the threads and then twist them around the motor leads or the switch leads and solder via capillary action properly. What I'm doing right now is I'm wiring the cation from the motors that power the flywheels to the motor that powers the pusher. That just saves you a little bit of wire so you don't have any waste in the circuit and allows for a much cleaner two battery lead. Then on the other end of the spectrum for the anions, I'm actually separating them for each switch so that we have a simple two switch setup. One switch, the rev switch will be powering the flywheel motors and turning both of them on and then the switch above that that I'd seat in the trigger is actually going to be the one that powers the pusher and agitator for the conveyor belt. Now I'm currently in there with some wire snips pulling out little bits of plastic underneath where the trigger used to be. That's because the original switches are very small, they're very weak and that's why we had to get rid of them but the new switches are much larger. That means that you have to carve out a space for them to fit in and then this is where modding gets kind of tricky is that you have to do a lot of fickling and tinkering with the exact placement of the switch depending upon where you want it. I like it to feel a lot like a clickier version of where the original switch pulled. That means that I have to carve out a large part of the internal plastic in the handle and then press the roller from that switch up against the original trigger. It's a lot of like guess and check and then you have to set it in some sort of polymer. Now. I highly recommend using epoxy putty because it's cheap and easy, but I'm using a two-part compound called polysilicate. It's just a little bit different, but it's really expensive, so I don't recommend it for anybody else. That said, the, the epoxy putty works in just the same way and allows you to kind of seat the switch into the shell. Since we've carved out all of the plastic that originally held the switches, we need to put something else in there to hold them securely in place. By seating them in such a fashion, they become very secure and very durable, and you'll get the same trigger and rev pull each time. I'm doing that for the trigger switch right now and I'm setting that at a very hair trigger which means that the trigger is exactly where it was and it will click that switch almost upon feathering it. It's, it's a really nice response. The, the clickiness of these switches is something that you get used to. There's almost no going back. And then I take 
miniature pieces of plastic that uh, white plastic rod you can see there is a piece of a stirring brush and I seat that into the polysilicate and then cut it off after I've allowed it to set in the switch. That uh, gives you not only the setting of the switch in a specific position, but also mechanical fastening where it really can't go anywhere unless you come in there with like a razor blade and pliers and rip it out. Again, I use polysilicate. I highly recommend epoxy putty for most people. It's cheaper and you can buy it at Lowe's or online. Links in the description box below. With the switches done and the electronics of the circuit complete, I've set the front end of the blaster back into place, and all I'm doing right now is splicing the lead so that it'll be easy to connect to the LiPo battery connector. I use XT60s for that. A lot of people use Deans. It really is just a preference thing. Whatever your LiPos come with, more or less, that's what you should splice your female connector onto for the battery. And then I've also got some heat shrink, which is why we keep coming in with a heat gun. That's just to make sure that everything is clean and there's no shorts in our circuit. But that's the female connector for an XT60 right there. And once that gets soldered in, the blaster should be uh, functional. All it will need is a LiPo. I'm kind of playing with the idea there of putting a shield back on top of those switches, but I decided to scrap it because it just won't fit anymore. You do lose one or two screw ports while you're doing this modification due to the size of the switches. As long as you keep the two very clean in the bottom of the handle, you should be absolutely a-okay. Then a quick test here with a very small LiPo before we do a full firing demo reveals that everything is functional and working and it's going to be a-okay. Thumbs up for that. Alrighty guys, so it's fully modified. This is the Nemesis in true form. Uh, you can hear there is a 3S LiPo. It's a huge 3S LiPo rocking inside the original battery tray. I normally add foam, but I wanted to get this video out soon. So it still rattles a little bit, but for, for wars we'll add padding. Now, you can see that we lost one screw port here to a high amperage switch. Uh, that switch is placed almost exactly right here, and because of that, we've actually lost the uh, the safety as well. But we don't need a safety because this is just uh, just designed for battle. So it's now a combat model nemesis, so to speak. But uh, it's going to blow through this hopper in short order. We've set up some rather uh, simple targets to obliterate. Teddy was unavailable for today's shooting demonstration, but uh, this thing is insane. Fully modified rival blasters just do some incredible things so between the agitator being overvolted and the motors being overvolted these are going to be toast check out this performance <laughs> always get hang-ups right here so um, firing rate is not a hundred percent consistent the chaos is actually a more consistent blaster in terms of its firing rate because of how it feeds with a, a constant spring pushing up through the magazine into the conveyor this is a little bit wonky because sometimes the agitator will prevent you from getting one into the conveyor and so you'll have like a half second skip or whatever but I mean a hundred rounds that fast Target's completely obliterated. The the sheer foamy carnage up here speaks for itself. But uh, this thing is awesome. I highly recommend modifying your Nemesis. The fact that the stock motors can handle this 3S for just ever, I, I assume. Now, that might be an overstatement, but I put at least 3,000 rounds through my Chaos at this point, and it's using the same tech. So I think that a fully modified Nemesis is an HVZ just terror. I can't imagine... The, uh, the horde of zombies that it would take to get through an entire hopper of Nemesis full auto, especially at that kind of fire rate with that kind of performance. But thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this modification guide and then demonstration of fuel power. Um, I will uh, see you guys tomorrow with another fun and awesome Nerf vid. As always, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to make sure that you catch not only all of my reviews from Toy Fair, but also all of my future tinkerings, you are welcome to subscribe and then make sure that you hit that bell button on my channel page. It'll make sure that you get all of the notifications just like how you used to on YouTube. I don't know why this is necessary, but it helps out a bunch with the entire process. <laughs> all right. Much love, Nerf on Drac out.